Welcome to the map Forts of Brunin 2 in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a replay commentary between good and evil. We have the Gondor player versus Isengard. Okay, so the plan is obviously always the same. For Gondor, it is about to destroy the slumber mills outside, and for Isengard, it's about to defend them. And for that reason, War Chain is going to be used in the middle of the map. And your goal is to hurt those soldiers as much as you potentially can. It's very important. You will be able to take one of them down. It's pretty good, actually. And now the second Uruk is making it to the settlement. And it's going to be a 2v2 situation on the enemy Alvin Wood, which will empower the soldiers. But remember, he will be able to bring more and more Uruks. And I don't like the tower. I don't think you need it. He will cancel it for that reason. And he has only a Uruk pit opening, no furnace inside the bees. Which means he's heavily relying and depending on the outside settlements, which are super important to be protected. And I think he's kind of confident that he will win the 2v2 situation. For that reason, he's rushing forward. In the meantime, Gondor player is trying to creep the goblin layer with the hobbit and the soldier. But also, he is heavily depending on the farms outside because he was going for a barracks opening, which will delay his stable big time. And also he was going for a barracks and farm opening, which means his blacksmith will need a longer time to reach to level 2. But he will be able to take the creep for himself, that's pretty good. And also share the experience with the Hobbit, Peregrine took. He's level 3 now, that's immensely powerful. And Aizen should be able to defend this now, but I believe the soldiers are still able to deal crazy amount of damage. And for that reason, Gondor player was always, I mean almost able to collect the whole power point. Okay. So the farm here will be taken down. Always use the block, block formation. And it's going down. And again, all of that will cut the food bonus from the Gondor player. And you can see he's struggling money-wise, you know? But that's a very powerful level 2 soldier. But he's not going for the Lumber Mill, which means it's good for Aizen. Now he's going to finally move. And this Lumber Mill will be for sure taken down. But remember, he has a Uruk Pit level 2 now, and he will get the chance to recruit some Berserker, which are countering the soldiers. However, on the Alvin Wood, a level 2 soldier will be able to win the 1v1 situation against your Berserker. For that reason, you need to wait for, like, a second one at bare minimum. Good micro, actually. Hit, run. Nice micro, I like it! He's beating them out of the lane too. And he will be actually able to win the 1v1 fight, uh, situation because of the good micro. In the meantime, Aizen was able to creep this with the Uruks. And I believe he was also able to creep this. That's pretty good for Aizen. He has now in total almost two power points collected already. So he's going to be very close to the industry power spike. And get one more settlement. He has now three in total. Which means he has now in total 15%. Never mind, he has actually two. Because he went for a slaughterhouse there. Which in my opinion is a mistake. Because this one is easy to be protected, and you're going for the Lumber Mill here, will give you the food bonus, or wood bonus rather, and you will be able to fill up your bees way faster. Okay, but this creep will be for sure contested. Beautiful trample with the Knights of Gondor. Industry unlocked and immediately used. And that's the power spike for the evil faction. It doesn't matter if you play Mortar or Isengard, if you get the Industry, you will be able to fill up your bees super fast. And for that reason, creeping or playing a bit more offensively at the beginning of the game is super recommended. Okay, the creep here will be eventually taken by the pikeman. And Gondor is creeping this one with the knight number 2. Also his hobbit is actually level 4 and a half. Level 5 will unlock the peregrine of the tower guard which will make him deal more damage. Which is uh, underrated but it's very powerful. So he has a good looking beast. He still needs to build a well. And one more blacksmith. Your goal is to get up to six blacksmiths in total to get the full discount of the steel bonus. So at some point of the game, it's pr you know, probably not bad to demolish this farm over there and build up a blacksmith instead. And also this lumber mill has no protection and will be taken down. Isengard was using Warchant to creep this with the pikemen. They will get level 2 out of that. And we have still this creep over there as Gondor is taking this one over here. Okay, so he will get the 3 power point pretty fast. The money was taken by Isengard, that's pretty good. And also this creep was taken by Isengard. Now we have Lourdes, super early Lourdes and even earlier Warp Pit with like half empty bees. 
That's a strategy and a technology we have not seen quite a lot. But it might work out. However, again, the same situation like at the beginning of the game. With this opening, Aizen actually heavily relies on the resource income from the outside settlements. And has to make sure to keep them protected for the entire game pretty much. Okay, this is going to be the last creep. Gondor is getting big time closer to the Great Company Special Summon. And for that reason, you need to demolish the structures in time. You don't want to hit power point. Beautifully done from Aizen. And he still needs a quarter, which is not going to be super easy. In going for the barracks or, uh, around this location. But remember, the Isenga player has now Vork Riders. That means he will be already ready to counter this move from his opponent. Lords. He might be in trouble, actually. The soldiers are demolishing that. Lords is getting chunked a lot. He's going to use the cripple to kill one of the horses. That comes the whole ability. But the Knights of Gondor have to disengage. He still needs a tiny bit amount of uh, power points to get to unlock his great company, which will be super powerful. But you want to use it before your enemy gets too strong. If your enemy has like heavy armor on the war riders, the great company summon is not going to add too much to the table. More soldiers of Gondor. But the Berserker ready to defend. Full health. It's a level 1 unit. Two, you need 3 hits actually to kill them. But the Berserk is being quite tanky. Still losing almost the 1v1 situation. Because these are no orcs. These are well trained soldiers of Gondor. Ooh, so close actually. But he was able to make it. Now, not don't feed your Vorks like this. Oh my god. Will he summon the Great Company to finish off the Vork Rider though? That's the big question. He's gonna try to catch him. Ooh, beautiful catch actually. I really like that. Okay, now we will see a beast rush happening very, very soon. He's waiting for a shield upgrade, which will make his armor, like, go crazy against arrows. And there comes the Great Company. I mean, with the Great Company, you should also be able to get a whole power point unlocked to have the heal during your rush, during your beast rush. It means you can stay in the base from your opponent even longer. Not a single furnace beside this one is level 3. And the reason why this is level 3 is because of the industry. It makes you level up your structure faster. And the base rush is happening. It's a very greedy Alvin Wood from, his, uh, from the Gunner player. Because by this, by, at this point of the time, we need to expect a Tainted Land. Which will give Isengard the chance to defend this pretty easily. But the Knights of Gondor are still pretty strong. Does he have heal? Almost. But he has lots of pikemen around this location. And the ranges got kind of messed up by the war riders, actually. They are getting getting knocked down over and over again. And the push will be defended, actually, quite easily. And he didn't even get the chance to unlock his heal power point from his spellbook. But now we have the soldier power guard combination. The pretty beefy combination of the pikemen and sportmen from the Gondor faction, which gives you the chance to fight for the map control against Isengard. And also kind of counter. The Vork Riders. In order to counter this as Aizen, you need to make your own combo, which are the Uruk Pikeman combination. By. And the Vorks are gonna fight for the map control. So look good looking map for Gondor still. You know, pretty good. I like it. Okay. And we have also Sharku, the Vork leader. Oh my god, that's gonna be another beast rush. Um, but remember, I think he has lots of pikemen. Yeah, he has plenty of pikemen in the beast. Actually, he has three pikemen, if four pikemen actually in the beast. So without the great company special summon, that's gonna be quite difficult. Lourdes is level three. We'll use the carnage to fight against his combos. Ooh, Lourdes hitting like a truck, getting free experience there by the way from killing this unit. We'll get to level five very, very soon. Tower will be getting destroyed, which will give Gondor the chance. Oh my god, he's gonna lose a whole battalion. Who's the host of this game, actually? It's Isengard. So, uh, you know, usually when you play this matchup, you need to be on host as Gondor. <laughs> it's quite helpful because you are the one with the micro in intense units like the Knights of Gondor. And we will get more forces of Gondor. Sharku 
can't really add too much to the table because Gondor Knights have now full upgrades, they have shields, they have heavy armor, they have forge blades, they are hitting super hard, they are becoming super tanky. They can even fight the pikemen without any problems. We will get to hear more and more knights approaching the battlefield. So the Gondor player is not planning to get his Gandalf on the field anytime soon. He's gonna actively fight for the map control and for that reason he needs more knights. But also he needs the tower guard soldier combination which are super important. So Isengard going for armory has now banner, heavy armor and forge blades purchased. Still missing the fire arrows which is the most expensive upgrade from the armory. But of course the same situation like before Lourdes. Oh my god Lourdes is pogging boys. He's gonna use war chant on the spike man. Mm, I don't think it was needed to be honest with you. It's kind of waste. Lord's got level 4.5. I mean, him getting level 5 is actually crucial for the Isengard lead game situation. We have plenty of Vorks up on the field. And also, uh, the Pikeman with the Forge Bleeds. Super dangerous. And Eisen has good map control. On the Alvin Hood, you can actually fight this. You are super tanky. But Lourdes will get the chance to use the Carnage and go on you over and over again. Ooh, the Chunking. Ooh, bad trampling. Oh my god. He's, he's gonna use the heal and actually get away. There comes the Great Company for the second time. The Vorks are gonna ride through them though. Beautiful trample. Dealing hella damage. And the Knights will be barely able to get away from this situation. But another kind of protected base rush from Isengard, pretty good. The Uruk pit might go down actually to these combos. They are super strong and very, very tanky. But there are too many towers. There is a Lords, there is a Walk Rider with heavy armor and forge blades. There is a Sharku. And they will be barely able to protect the Uruk pit level 3, which is the strongest and the tankiest structure in the, at this point of the time in the Isengard piece. Um, but he needs to get this demolished, yes, as soon as possible. Because in BFME 1, unlike in BFME 2, you have only a limited amount of spots and you want you want to use them wisely you now it's super important okay so Sharku is level three he's now the leadership for the Vorks. lords level four and a half and isengard's eco not looking too bad um now he can make some combos what you want to do here is i would like to send some workers to repair the structure otherwise the auto repair is going to take too much time and Gondor has still good map control. We, have, we are talking about five farms for Gondor. You know, pretty good. Stable level almost three, Barracks level three already. And Ganaf the White, or Ganaf the Grey actually, will be there very, very soon. For Gondor, because he doesn't have the power points, he needs to turn him into the Ganaf the White. Which is super crucial and incredibly important. There comes the Grey Rider. He's gonna get on the Shadow Facts, but when you are grey with Ganaf, you cannot use the Easter Light. You need to get him to level 5. That's why it's disabled. And of course, besides that, you also get more health. Your powers recharge faster. You also hit way harder with your powers. So for that reason, it's the best two power point investment you can actually do. And it's highly recommended. Don't play with Ganaf the Grey, because the difference between Ganaf the Grey and Ganaf the White is actually massive. For example, this blast has a minute cooldown when he's grey, but if he's white, he's gonna get 30 seconds cooldown as you can see and tell. So half or double the recharge time actually, you know? Super powerful. Lourdes, of course, a hero you need to avoid. But he's super weak against Knights of Gondor. He's gonna get chunked a lot. Level 5 knights, level 4 knights, super, super strong. Aizen is still good map control though. He might go for Saruman very, very soon. Um, I mean, he's making army at this point of the time. He's actually command points. No, he's not command points kept. He's money kept. Ganaf is going to farm power points for Ais, uh, for Gondor. But the only thing you need to do is always avoid to get crippled by Lords. It's very important. Ganaf is not the tankiest hero in the game. So in most cases, if you get trampled, uh, if you get crippled, you might die. You know? Level 4, Sharku. The Vork Rider with Farami upon the field. Farami is not a bad choice when it comes to fight against heroes like Lourdes. And of course, Saruman later on. But the true power spike we are looking for for Pistolero, Pistolero is actually the Eagle Special Summon. Because you want to have some sort of burst damage to take down the enemy Lourdes first before you commit to a big fight. 
And we have also bottom here, the captain of Gondor up on the field. No marketplace, which might be a good choice for the late game situation. Might go for the outpost control, but again, at this point of the time, it's super difficult for you to win against army against army, you know? Because you have no leadership, you have no damage leadership. Which means even if you go for the combos, without border leadership, without fire leadership, you will always get out damaged by the enemy combos. Because they have Warchan, which is already better than Ganaf leadership. Later on, they will have also Saruman. All of these heroes give you a leadership right off the bat. And Saruman gives you more tankiness and combat experience. But also Lords is super close to level 5, you know? So he will get there. All he needs are few kills or share experience with the army during the fight. The war pit will be demolished. Okay. So now that's a strong army. He's gonna use the Great Company. And Isengard might go for a big war chant here. Does he have war chant? He does have war chant. He will be using it. He's gonna get chunked. What is he doing actually? Lord's getting bullied a little bit there. The knights are tramp going for a trample. Ganaf is gonna go in. He's gonna blast, but crippled right after. He very early heal. He was like almost full HP when he healed him. But there is not much that can actually shoot. He's gonna use the lightning sword, and he has also the bubble for the worst case scenario. So I'm assuming he will be safe. But in the meantime, the Vorks are able to clean everything there. Actually, you know, he killed uh, Faramir too. Ganaf is gonna get in safety no problem. He didn't even need to use the bubble. Because not many crossbowmen were remaining from the army. And also Boromir is gonna go down to the Borg Riders. He's gonna go for the Alvinute. Boom! But immediately covered. Now it's debatable if it's needed to cover this land here. I don't think it's needed. It's like the center of the map. It doesn't really add too much value to your army. What you could be doing instead is you use land maybe here. So when you siege him, you have like a land to fight on in which you are stronger. But of course, in the, during the game, you know, everything has to happen immediately, you know, spontaneously. And for that reason, today. mistakes might also happen as you don't really plan your action. Your actions are more like reactions, you know? Your op opponent does something and you react to that in a second. And your reaction might not be always the best call of We've your time, of your life. And he knows uh, Lourdes is dead. Lourdes actually level 4. It means 2 minutes and 30 seconds revive time. That is the good time for Gondor to punish his opponent. Now there is a White Rider. He has also armor leadership, which will make those Knights of Gondor even tankier. He's gonna go for a blast. Kill a whole battalion of pikemen without any problems. The Uruk Pit will be taken down. He's gonna use Easter to one-shot a sentry tower. And of course, the goal here is to farm power points over and over again. And get to the Eagle Summon from the Spellbook of Gondor. Isengard has actually 4 power points collected. He went for the Freezing Rain, which in my opinion is a mistake. There are too many lands of you around the map, which Gondor can easily use to regain leadership. In this matchup, you want to go for the Fuel the Fires out of two reasons. Like the first reason, I explained why the Freezing Rain is not very really good. And also the second reason is, it's cheaper, you know. You will get to Balrog faster if you pick the, great, uh, the Fuel the Fires or the Rain. Okay, Boromir has been revived, but he's still level 3 without any experience gained before he got killed before. 4 power points versus 4 power points, but he's closer to the Eagles. Now that's a huge Isengard army. 3 combos, one of them has to, to, to go back to the base to recover actually. He's gonna get crippled this time, oh but this time it's a different situation. He has heal from the spellbook, but there is just too much DPS. And I think he's gonna use the bubble to reduce a lot of the incoming damage for a few seconds. He needs to use heal. He's gonna use heal, but it doesn't heal you back to full HP. Actually, he will get free. And Boromir also got somehow level 4 during the fight. And uh, very unfortunate situation. Just uh, not enough damage. And also, one more time, Boromir has been killed. But now, for the next big fight, Lourdes got level 5, okay? That's a huge game changer. Getting the Uruk hero to level 5 for the 60% more DPS for the nearby allied units around him. Very powerful. Gondor is not super rich, but he went for the blacksmith. I mean, for the iron ore and the grand harvest. You can see the animation on his structures. So he has the marketplace. And also, this guy is level 6 now. He has the My Vork is Hungry ability, which is super powerful. It will give you 100% damage and 30% armor. It will make him to a very strong duelist. And might might be actually the way to go when you cripple Ganoff with your Lourdes, 
Your Sharku can go in there, use the ability and go fight him. Trust me, Sharku's damage should not be underestimated. Super powerful hero. We have also Saruman now up on the field. Another powerful creature. A beast from the east. And a rival to this wizard over there. Paramir is still level 3. Paramir will get revived, but it's a different situation now because he has leadership. And also Gondor combos will eventually come. He's gonna make Tower Guard Archer combination potentially, or just sell the archers to the Citadel to get uh, the structure to level 2 and make Rangers instead. Rangers, of course, have more TPS. But I don't think you can win the combo against combo fight against this army with triple leadership. We have Saruman, Lourdes, and Warchant. And for the big fight situation, he also has the Freezing Green to deny all your leadership bonuses. So everything looks literally in favor of Aizen and he will get crippled one more time. What is this Lords doing actually? He's a sniper with the AK-47. Does he have heal from the spell book? No, he doesn't have heal. But he wasted a lot of time. He needs to use the bubble. Bubble, 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 bubble. He's gonna use the bubble. There comes the steal, but he won't be able to survive this time. He even got the chance to steal a lot of his enemy, I believe. I return to defend the White city. And Gon Boromir has to return to defend the White City. Ganafas level 7, it will take you 3 minutes to get him back on the field and that's a lot of momentum and um, space for Isengard to get the whole map during the absence of Ganaf. The level 7 Knight of Gondor will be able to get away there, that's not a big problem. The Outpost has a protection with the Tower Guard Soldier combination. Paramia was barely able to get any experience during the fight. And Isengard didn't have to use the Freezing Rain. He has 10 power points in the bank. He has almost command points kept. And he has lots of money. And now he's gonna go for the Siege. Bring the fight to them. And Gondor has 5.5 power points collected. He has still space in his command points. He could make some more army. And he's very close to the Eagle Special Summon. But again, look at this army. Look how scary this army is looking like. Like we are talking about a fireball against one of the eagles. We are talking about Warchant and leadership from Lord's combination, 110% more damage, which all of that might result a eagle to get one-shotted before he even can, can launch one single attack, you know? Charku is coming, level almost seven. Gondor army is preparing for the, for the ultimate, potentially the last fight of the game. But again, everything can still happen. We don't know. Like, eagles can mess up this army. All you need to do is go for Lourdes. Kill Lourdes. And your Ganov can shine bright like a diamond. You can go for Saruman to take out the armor leadership. The chance of the fireball for the massive AoE. But this army still looks super scary. Look at them shining, bro. Like in Helm's Deep, bro. What the heck is that? This way. This way. And I like the mix, you see? That, that was the reason why we wanted always to add Sharku. Even though we are always against adding new stuff to the game. But I think Sharku adds lots, lots of diversity to the Isengard playstyle. And makes the works kind of useful. Boromir has to be careful. He's leading the armies. Ooh, son. Going for, for, for the Lords? But eagles get literally one-shotted. You see, they get only cha the chance to attack once. The army gets slaughtered in the meantime. There comes the Freezing Green. Alvin Wood will be used, but immediately covered. Now, he could also cover this land. There comes Ganoff, the White Rider, but he won't be even able to kill them. It's insta-crippled. They have just too much armor leadership. And gets one tap, bro. One tap. One-shotted. He just couldn't get... Couldn't kill Lords with the eagles. They could not attack more than once. Boromir will die in a second. He couldn't even heal Gandalf. That's why, that's how powerful this army is. Now, going for the blast there, blast deals hella damage, by the way. But it's limited. It's not one shot. Like, they have armor leadership from, from Saruman, 40% armor. They have the land leadership for 35% armor. And they have the war chant. So, yeah, they are like literally tanks, bro. You know, you just can't one shot them. And Ganov just returned. But remember, Ganov always returns stronger than he died. And he also demolished the archer range, so no more archers anytime soon. Isengard lost the outpost though, that will slow down the siege. 
There is only one ram which Gondor should be able to protect against. And the knights are being chased on from the Vorgs with Sharku. Saruman is also on the hunt, but he's super low, he has to be careful. Faster! Okay, so what's the plan? Maybe Trebuchet can save today, but you need four of them to get the Siege Wargs or the Workshop to level 2 for the Firestone, which is super important. One Ram was able to get through all of that fiesta that happened. Now he's going for the double C situation. The Ram should get literally two-shotted by this Trebuchet, maybe even one-shotted. And has no protection, so the Knights could legit go there and take it down. But you want to do that before it gets chunked too much. Now be, be, BL with the combos, bro. That's a lot of money you will lose. Oh my god. Okay. But again, without Ballista, without Ram, you can't really break in. You can't really do much. Charku was using the ability. Beautiful ability there. This lasts actually for um 30 sec for 20 seconds. Lord's level 8, Saruman almost level 6, Kenaf has been killed, he's gonna be back very very soon. Also this dude was level 4, 2 minutes and 30 seconds revive time. The losing heroes actually big time punishment, of course you need to reinvest the money. But in the super late game, it's not about the money, it's about the time. And your punishment will be the waiting time, you know. Kenaf is back on the menu boys, almost level 8. The outpost has no protection, will be taken down. Feeding lots of power points to his opponent, he's almost at 20. That is gonna be a Balrog very very soon from Omar Mohammed. He's playing a decent game in this game. I like the way he's playing. He's super aggressive. Have, to have the diversity in the army. I mean, Gondor Knights can actually fight this. They have like crazy armor with the shields. The blast won't connect. Almost 20 power points. Gondor is so far away from the EOD actually. Holy. Like this last three fights were actually such a big game changer. And there comes the Balrog. That's a bad plus, actually. Um, he could... He did still destroy four of them. But if you blast, I mean, the breath from this location, you go almost here, like here, then you can destroy five of them, actually. So Gondor has to find a solution to this problem, which is not gonna happen. He has an outpost, yes, but he has he's seven power points away. So the only chance I can see him doing is go for a juicy Zap Blast there. Blast like the whole army with your Ganav and get like four or five power points from that. But it's easier said than done. He needs to wait for the Eagles. He has no money too. He's up he has like 1700 in the bank. So he will not be able to recapture the castle. Because Isengard captured him for himself, you know. Isengard is now two castles in an outpost. Full population, 510 out of 500 available command points. has 10,000 in the bank. You can see the money differential between evil and good in the lead game is super massive. And also Farami is getting chunked big time. That is the great company. What can great company do against such reckless seed? The answer to this is absolutely nothing. It's gonna use the warning arrow on the lords who's level 8. Each level will give you more health, and there comes the big war chant. Oh my goodness, bro. Does he have eagles? He's gonna go for the eagles. Oh, he... Fireball. Oh no, he couldn't even kill Saruman, bro. Killed Lurz. But he knows there is no victory. And Pistolero has been defeated. Omar Mohammed with the Isengard faction takes a W in evil shall rule the middle earth gg well played i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did you know what to do leave a like subscribe i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep eating like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys